Okay, this is a video about the um, Simeo X70, specifically the X70A 12W uh, gaming laptop computer and the fact that it overheats pretty alarmingly. Um, more on that in a bit. First of all, here's a little tip. Um, as laptops get old, the fans tend to suck in lots of fluff. And on this particular model, you've got air intake there, there. The main fan air intake is there, and it all gets blown out through there. Uh, this tip works with anyone, um, any laptop, uh, rather than take the whole thing apart. Get yourself a torch, turn the lights out, which I'm not going to do because it will confuse the GoPro, and then just shine the torch in the air intake and see how much light you can see where the fan intake is and you can also rest the torch on the fan intake and have a look in and just wiggle it about and see how much light is there obviously if the air intake is blocked by a bit of fluff a bit of lint sort of a build up behind it then you will need to take it apart to um, get that out or blow it through suck it out um, but that's a quick test to see if you actually have to do that. This particular model has already been cleaned out. Um, it does get extremely hot. Before I made the tweaks, it was uh, on very simple benchmarks. It was um, peaking at about 96 degrees and uh, the person whose laptop belongs to uh, had regular shutdowns. They were using it on a, on a duvet, so it was blocking all the air intakes, but it was drastically overheating, which isn't good. So let's see how we fix that without taking the whole thing apart. Obviously, you can take the whole thing apart and refresh, remake the thermal paste. That is one thing that you can do. But if you don't fancy doing that, then this is how I managed to fix it on this one, keeping the costs down. Um, and also without the need to dismantle the whole thing. So I'll turn it on and then I'll show you what I did. So uh, first thing is that um, this originally comes with Windows 8. This one's been updated to Windows 10. There are issues with that uh, which I have uh, fixed. Um, one of the main issues is um, I'll just move the for a second. Move that back. So there's the desktop. Uh, one of the main issues with that is some of the uh, built-in Toshiba bloatware slash some of the stuff that's useful isn't really that compatible with Windows 10 and causes uh, problems. Also you might notice that the keyboard isn't illuminated. There is a keyboard shortcut for that which doesn't function unless the function key program is running. That function key program is what causes a hang on shutdown so I have turned that off but that's the program that you use to turn the keyboard backlight off and you find that on the start menu, scroll down to T for Toshiba, and you'll see it's listed there. Toshiba is listed as function key. So there it is. So you can see the belt light is off. If I now flick it, it comes on and off again, and I get a notification. So that's the program that does that. What I've found is that if you turn the backlight off, the fan spins faster. Don't know why that is. It just does. So if you don't particularly need the backlight, although it does look quite pretty, then turn it off and you'll get better fan function. Whether the voltage that lights the keyboard is also used to power the fan, I don't know. But it seems to work better with it off. And the function key program is the one that you use to turn the backlight off. And it's function key and then Z. And you can see that's it on. And that's it off. Um, I'll just clarify that a bit more. 
clearly by doing this. Oh, I can't see it now. So that's it on. And that's it off. So it works an awful lot better at cooling with that off. Um, but when the program, uh, when you shut down or attempt to shut down, that function key program hangs in the Windows 10 and prevents the shutdown. So I've disabled that, stopped it from loading so that once the backlight's off, you can't turn it back on again unless you run that program um, just to make the, the shutdown better. The function keys on the top, the brightness ones, and the, all your standard Windows ones, like your pause, and they all work anyway. The actual function key program is specifically for the keyboard backlight, and I think to disable the touchpad. Uh, the keyboard backlight one doesn't work with that program running, but all the rest do. So in terms of functionality, by not running that program, you haven't really lost very much. The other thing is that uh, if you throttle the processor speed, and that's done under power options. So you go to the power options down here, and then you go to uh, change plan settings, change advanced power settings, scroll down to processor power management, minimum power state, uh, typically it's 5%, maximum processor state. In this case, I've locked that at 90%. Now this is the i7, um, which runs pretty toasty anyway. The kind of games that you play aren't going to be particularly processor intensive. In other words, having an i5 or an i7 won't make a great deal of difference to the game. But if you've got this particular model working flat out, the heat it generates is ridiculous. So if you lock it at 90% of maximum um, processor speed, that your games that you play shouldn't be really affected that much but the temperature drops about 10 degrees. That's the difference between it working and not working. So lock it at 90%, turn off the keyboard backlight, and then you've, you've pretty much got um, a computer that actually works quite nicely and doesn't turn itself off or freak out when it gets hot. Uh, for testing, what I use was the Valley Benchmark from Eugene. Um, I didn't want to run Prime 95 because Prime 95 stresses all cores at 100%, which on this machine would almost certainly have, have, have caused it to overheat and have it give it a massive shutdown. Um, to monitor, I use real temp. Um, so you run that, run the benchmark, and with this benchmark running for about an hour after the settings I've just mentioned, basically lower the processor maximum state to 90%, turn off the keyboard backlight and then check that the fan isn't obstructed by fluff. Once you do that, it actually peaks out about 86. So it takes about 10 degrees off it and brings it into normal operating parameters. Um, I've only mentioned this because when people have bought this machine new, they've noticed it getting very hot straight out of the box. Uh, most people, from what the research I've done, it kicks around about 86 degrees anyway. This one actually does 96 and shuts down with with the Sims, which is ridiculous, mainly because it was being played on a duvet which blocked the air intakes. Um, you don't get much ground clearance with the feet either, so it has to be on a flat surface, but even then it still kicks out some pretty serious heat. So um, this is a, a pretty terrible laptop for overheating. Um, yeah, so those two things make the difference. Uh, another thing with Windows 10, I've noticed, uh, this, this actually got BIOS version 1.3 in it. I think there is a, a newer version of the BIOS, but you might notice under Windows 10 that it's incredibly slow to boot. It takes about two minutes before it even begins to look for Windows. You fix that by going into the BIOS, which means you um, press Shift Restart and then select Troubleshoot to Advanced Options and then uh, UEFI firmware, and that should take you into the BIOS. That's assuming that you know, pressing F2 doesn't work on normal boot, which it probably won't do in Windows 10. 
So that, uh, once you get into there, you go to faster boot, which is in the advanced tab. Scroll along the top, go to advanced. Uh, there's an item of boot speed, change that to fast. What that does is it only then boots from the internal M.2 SSD and it doesn't go looking for any other drives uh, and it boots as fast as it booted at the start of this video. So after the upgrade to Windows 10, if you notice these problems, then that fixes it without the need to take the thing apart. Obviously, if you want to take the thing apart and refresh the thermal paste and do everything else, then you're very welcome to do that. But if you don't really like the idea of that, either because um, you're a bit of a noob when it comes to taking things apart, then what I've just described will fix the overheating problem and you should be able to game perfectly happily without it conking out on you. Uh, I'll just illustrate one of the things I mentioned when I shut it down. If I do start and then shut down it's the Toshiba flash cards is the thing that hangs uh, closing one up and shutting down this app is preventing shutdown that's the function key app that I mentioned that's the one that controls the backlight on the keyboard so with that running it, it hangs on start well the actual file name is tcrd main m main underscore win8 so it's a, specifically a windows 8 program which obviously didn't really like you know, windows 10 doesn't really like that um, I don't know if there's an updated version, I haven't looked. Um, what I'm saying here is that if you use it once to turn the backlight off and then stop it running, you then um, can't turn the backlight back on, but then you don't get this this, boot, this shutdown hang. So, um, yeah, just to illustrate uh, what I'm talking about, that's it shut down. A little pop with the speakers. I'll turn it back on again with the BIOS fix that I mentioned. This is just refreshing what I've done. You can stop watching if you don't want to see that again. So you turn it on and it should jump straight and find the SSD. Gives Windows 10 straight away and you get the login screen. For shutting down, because that program isn't running, if I then shut down now it should shut down a lot faster because I've stopped that program from running. Uh, I think I use CCleaner to do it. Another thing you can do is you can identify it in Task Manager and then open the file location and then just rename it and then run CCleaner to pick up the um, corrupted registry entry that obviously result from that. And that's it. Yeah, that's it shut down. So, um, yeah, so you can solve the overheating problem and prevent all these shutdowns and prevent burning your leg. I mean, it still gets pretty toasty, but it won't burn your leg anymore uh, without the need to completely dismantle it. Um, yeah, so hope this video helped. If it did, um, then um, give it a like. Any questions, tick in the comments. Thanks for watching.